My story is one that is filled with gratitude. I know I would not have been here had it not been for the people who supported me, as well as the opportunities that I had been uh, provided. From the big family in the kampung where I grew up in, to my teachers and uh, professors, as well as, as well as mentors who had nurtured me, uh, my fellow volunteers, as well as my students who kept me relevant and grounded, I share this journey with you. Now, but before I continue my story, please allow me to continue my speech in Malay. Selamat pagi, salam sejahtera semua. Nama saya Wan Rizal dan saya adalah bapa kepada empat orang anak. Saya ingin mengambil kesempatan ini untuk mengucapkan terima kasih kepada isteri dan ibu bapa saya yang telah menyokong dan mendorong saya di dalam kerja-kerja kemasyarakatan selama ini. Saya sudah mengajar uh, lebih dari 15 tahun dari peringkat sekolah rendah hingga ke politeknik dan universiti. Dan saya bangga kerana lebih ramai anak Melayu kita yang telah melanjutkan pelajaran mereka ke peringkat politeknik dan universiti. Saya harap pengalaman saya dalam pelbagai organisasi masyarakat selama ini telah memberi saya pendalaman mengenai isu-isu dan cabaran-cabaran yang dihadapi oleh rakyat kita. Di antara isu-isu yang saya rasa masyarakat kita perlu lebih prihatin adalah tentu sekali kesihatan dan kedua dari segi mobiliti sosial. Bagi saya pendidikan itu adalah satu kunci yang penting kerana ialah adalah satu cara untuk kita mewujudkan mobiliti sosial di dalam masyarakat kita. Dan saya akan kupasnya di dalam ucapan Inggeris saya sebentar lagi. Now ladies and gentlemen, I spent my first four years in a kampung I remember vividly sitting under the mango tree, eating my piping hot nasi lemak with my cousins. When it rained, I would rush into the house, get pet, get pens and, uh, and cups, and collect rainwater as it dripped from the holes of a zinc roof. Growing in the HDB was not much different. I had a lot of play. I remember playing a lot of void deck football, and perhaps that may be the reason why I ended up in a normal stream in secondary school. But somehow, I managed to get myself in a polytechnic and graduated with a diploma in electronics. Although I must admit, in track and field because I was running on the track every single day. But this is where I found my passion sports and it is the same passion that made me join the education service as a PE teacher. Now, over the years, I honed my skills and eventually I got myself a degree from NTU at the age of 31. And a few years later, and four children later, a PhD. So as you can see, this moment here right now for me is surreal. Upon graduating with a degree at 31 years old, I started to do community work. I first served as the chairman of the Pungul Mosque Building Committee, and upon the mosque building completion, I assumed the role as the chairman. Now, within the same six years, I served in various interracial and religious confidence circles, where we worked closely with the grassroots organizations and other religious organizations to build a community that cares for one another, regardless of race or religion. When I ended my mosque chairmanship at the end of 2016, I was approached by Mr. Zainal Sapari, who also happened to be my form teacher for five years in the secondary school. So when your teacher approached you to help at the MPS, which is only a few blocks away, you cannot say no. And as for the past three years, I continued to be a grassroots leader, first at Pasir Ris East, and then concurrently at Punggol East. Now, doing community work is integral in my life, and in short, it keeps me grounded. And I'm humbled to now be given the opportunity to serve the community at a higher level. I hope to be the voice in parliament that upholds social mobility. And according to SM Taman in his recent speech, and I quote, we must never become a society where social pedigree and connections count for more than ability and effort. Now, because of the non-linear path that I had taken, I strongly believe that education is the key to social mobility. This is how we can allow people who have less or did less well to move up and prevent our society from being stratified. 
Singapore must continue to be a nation of opportunities for all, not for just the privileged few or the lucky ones, but for every Singaporean. Now, I believe that our education is on the right track, and I hope to be part of its further development. Firstly, I see the value of a robust early childhood education where we can expose our children early and create an environment where they can grow and explore. Second, I see the importance of education not just limited to you graduating from the polytechnics or the universities. Because let's face it, what is a certificate without the skills? And what are these skills if we do not continue to hone them? But most importantly, as this COVID-19 situation has proven to us, what is the point of having all these skills, but not agile or worse, our skills are irrelevant to this fast and dynamic world. Now to achieve that, Singapore must continue to provide multiple pathways for us to continue upskilling. We must also create a robust system that is foundational enough to keep our learners agile and nimble. And finally, I strongly believe in workplace flexibility. Now, I am well aware of that struggle, managing family, juggling work and studies. And I hope we can do more. My fellow Singaporeans, I will be that voice, the one that came from humble beginnings, the middle class, the sandwich class, the young families, and for those adult learners who made sacrifices to help their families. Ultimately, I believe that the drive for success belongs to each and every individual, but we must continue to create pathways, multiple pathways for everyone, even though who have less or did less well to climb up. Thank you.